Hello, everyone. This is Richard from Modern Healthspan. Today, we'll go through a recent review paper looking at magnesium. Magnesium is a key nutrient that comes in a number of forms, and it's difficult to get sufficient from our diet. We'll have a look at some of the background of magnesium and the impact of magnesium deficiency on metabolic health. Before we get into the paper, for those interested in supplementing with magnesium, let me introduce Magnesium Breakthrough from Bioptimizers. Sleep and stress management are vital for longevity. And my wife and I have been looking for ways to improve our sleep quality. After doing our research, we realized that magnesium is the key. Magnesium is a crucial mineral in hundreds of reactions in our body. And it has an impact on everything from metabolism to sleep, to energy, even bone and muscle health. It also has a role to play in stress response. So deficiency in this basic nutrient leads to bad sleep quality, low energy, accumulating stress, and impacts our overall health. There are also different forms of magnesium, and it's difficult to get all of it in your diet. Three months ago, we started trying a magnesium supplement from Bioptimizers. Their magnesium breakthroughs formulation has seven different forms of magnesium, all of which have a different function in the body. For myself, I really notice the difference. I frequently get jumpy legs at night, but with magnesium breakthrough, I'm not disturbed by my jumpy legs and I get a better, deeper sleep. We're happy to tell you that Bioptimizers is offering a 10% discount for this special magnesium formula to our audience. Just go to www.magnesiumbreakthrough.com slash modern or click on the link in the description and use the coupon code modern10 for a 10% discount. Thank you so much for your support, as always. And now, let's go back to today's video. I will use this recent review paper to look at some of the key data on magnesium with reference to its impact on metabolic disorders. Magnesium is an essential mineral and is involved in many fundamental processes. It is a cofactor in over 300 enzymatic reactions. Deficiency is correlated with negative health outcomes. In the West, we generally eat less than the RDA, and there is growing evidence of magnesium deficiency in various metabolic disorders, such as obesity, insulin resistance, diabetes, high blood pressure, dyslipidemia, and low-grade inflammation. High magnesium intake seems to help, including limiting fat accumulation, helping with insulin and glucose metabolism, improving lipid profile, and lowering inflammation. So magnesium may help with metabolic disorders, though more random clinical trials are needed. A little background on magnesium in the body. We need to get our magnesium from our diet. The recommended daily intake is 320 milligrams for adult women and 420 milligrams for men. About 120 milligrams gets absorbed in the gut, although about 20 milligrams is secreted, leading to a net intake of 100 milligrams, which matches the amount lost through the kidney. 50 to 60% of the magnesium is stored in bones, 25 to 30% in muscle, and about the same in other tissues. And less than 1% is stored in the blood, with a reference concentration of 0.75 to 0.95 millimoles per liter. This leads to the issue that it is quite difficult to judge whether a person is deficient in magnesium by looking at the serum levels. There are other tests, but these are more expensive and or invasive. So for the moment, the serum levels are generally used. Where can we get magnesium from in our diet? Some of the best sources are almonds, bananas, black beans, spinach, broccoli, oatmeal, seeds, and nuts. The one concern is that soil is often depleted of nutrients, which means that the food supply is also lacking. So let's have a look at some of the data on magnesium and various aspects of metabolic health, starting with its correlation with excess body weight. Blood levels of magnesium do show an inverse relationship with BMI and waist circumference, and supplementation seems to protect against obesity. The first meta-analysis showed that magnesium supplementation resulted in a reduction in BMI and a reduction in body weight and waist circumference in participants with insulin-resistant disorders, hypertension, obesity, and magnesium deficiencies at baseline. However, 
Another review found no change in many of the same metrics, except for waist circumference in obese individuals. So magnesium may protect against weight gain, but further studies are needed to confirm. Turning to hypertension or high blood pressure, some studies do confirm that magnesium supplementation can help high blood pressure. In this meta-analysis of random, double-blind, placebo-controlled trials, including participants both with and without hypertension, it was shown to reduce blood pressure. And a similar result was seen in patients with diabetes or pre-diabetes in two further meta-analyses. The final meta-analysis also showed a small but significant reduction in blood pressure with magnesium supplementation. Now looking at diabetes and metabolic syndrome. Diabetes, being overweight, high blood pressure, and bad blood lipids are all symptoms of metabolic syndrome. Metabolic syndrome is often correlated with low magnesium, as in this review, which showed that consumption of magnesium was inversely related to the risk of metabolic syndrome. While there was a more complicated relationship between magnesium levels in the blood and, again, metabolic syndrome. The effect was larger for participants who originally had low magnesium levels. It seems that magnesium supplementation can also impact glucose and insulin levels. In one meta-analysis, magnesium supplementation had a significant benefit to fasting blood glucose, HDL, LDL, triglycerides, and systolic blood pressure. As in the previous study, a bigger impact was seen in patients with low magnesium at baseline. In summary, low magnesium is correlated with diabetes and supplementing with magnesium may help the condition, though more RCTs are required. And then magnesium and the lipid panel. One thing to note is that bad levels on the lipid panel are often caused by an unhealthy diet, low in vegetables, fruit, and whole grains. This could also impact the magnesium levels as these are the main sources of magnesium. They did see some mention that magnesium supplementation helped with LDL, HDL, and triglyceride levels in the previous section, but studies looking at the lipid panel explicitly do not show a clear result. And finally, magnesium and chronic inflammation. In individuals with prediabetes and low levels of magnesium, lower serum magnesium correlated with higher CRP levels, showing higher inflammation. And supplementing with magnesium lowered the levels of CRP and improved sleep. Another study found no significant impact on CRP with magnesium, though looking at the study, it did show that CRP levels were reduced if they were above 3 mg per deciliter, indicating systemic inflammation. Another study, however, found that there was no statistically significant difference in inflammatory markers with magnesium. In summary, low magnesium does seem to play a part in low-grade inflammation, and several studies show promising results. However, there needs to be more studies to determine whether magnesium will help as a therapy for patients with inflammation and low magnesium. In conclusion, magnesium is an essential nutrient and deficiency is associated with negative health outcomes. It is implicated in some of the metabolic disorders, such as obesity, high blood pressure, diabetes, dyslipidemia, and low-grade inflammation. Although there are questions, the majority of studies do show the beneficial effects of magnesium in the context of metabolic disorders. We did not talk about the mechanisms of action in this video. The paper does go into them, and for those who are interested, the link is in the description. But they do conclude that magnesium supplementation may help with metabolic disorders. For me, I saw that magnesium supplementation seemed to help most where the individual was low on magnesium at baseline. They mention in the paper that studies have shown that 30 to 50% of people in Europe and North America eat less than the recommended daily allowance, which combined with the soil depletion would imply that being low on magnesium could be quite common, and so supplementation may be helpful. <music>